An iceberg is basically at the top is the stuff that is most people would know if they have played or heard of Hearthstone. But as you get deeper, you get into the ones that people probably have never heard of before. Uh, and uh, we're gonna go through all of this icebergs. Now, this was made from somebody on Reddit and the person that I actually messaged him on Reddit uh, last week, hoping he would get this done because I actually been wanting to do this, something like this for a while. Uh, this guy was nice enough to basically send me a full list of uh, or everything in this iceberg. Uh, so if I don't know something, which is we have a reference for it, but I'm going to try my best to kind of explain it, show some like, I don't know, some picture of it or something, just so people get an idea of like what is actually happening for each of these. So we'll start off. Uh, we'll start off with the the very first one, which is the Blitz Chunk controversy. I would argue, is this the most popular thing from Hearthstone? It might be the the Blitz Chunk controversy was a little bit of an iffy one. Um, it was basically during Grandmasters when Blitz Chunk, a competitive player, wanted to. He did an interview and he basically said that the Hong Kong uh, rebellion against China, uh, saying that they should stay strong against it. After that interview, I'm not going to show the clip. Uh, if whoever edits this. Video wants to show the club, you can go for it. <laughs> but uh, that clip basically stopped Blizzard from doing interviews in Grandmaster for like the rest of the season. He was fined and was going to get kicked out of Grandmasters for saying that. The, the interview itself is really sad because he's wearing a gas mask and stuff. It was it's a very controversial thing. Uh, Blizzard obviously did a really, really bad approach to how they responded to it. This is probably the biggest thing that uh, a lot of people know from Hearthstone if you've never actually played the game uh, because it leaned more into Blizzard as a company than Hearthstone as a whole. A lot of people stepped down from casting. It was, uh, it was a really bad moment it, it was a really bad moment when it came to the blitz chunk controversy there's a lot more into it and i'm sure uh we can put some images on the screen for the video just so people have an idea but yeah that was ridiculous it was, it was really it was a really bad moment for blizzard let's just talk about this three wins equals 10 golds in the old blizzard system oh my god this dude this was this was dude this makes me feel probably the oldest i gotta find like see if i can find an image for this so back in the old hearthstone system before they updated the um the new quest system and the new tavern pass you used to be able to get 10 gold for three wins at a cap i believe of 100 gold i feel like if you won 30 games in a day they would cut you off you no longer have that until the very next day this was basically there to not only some about your gold but also kind of give you another reason to keep playing hearthstone throughout the day this was in the game for a very long time and when the battle pass changed over and we got a brand new quest system they actually took this out because of the way that you actually got gold now uh, rather than getting it through only quests and the, the wins you get it through experiences this is archaic like if you remember this this was a long time ago and this was a pretty rough system uh paveling book oh my god that's an absolute banger pavel basically was a pro player in Hearthstone that had a really good year in Hearthstone because he ended up winning a world championship. And one of the games he won was because of the babbling book card where it basically, because of RNG, kind of won him the game. Uh, and we'll watch it right here. So to give you guys some context, uh, Amnesiac knows that there is absolutely no way for Pavel to answer this Malagos. And if this Malagos ends up living, this game is basically over. There's no way that Pavel even has a chance to come back. And on top of that, if and Amnesiac wins this game. Pavel is out of the tournament, out of the world championship. But fortunately for him, the heartbreak on the anyways pavel ended up winning this match and then he he ended up winning the world championship it's it was an absolutely ridiculous moment and i feel bad for amnesiac still to this day because that was absolutely horrendous but it really showed hearthstone rng at the time uh whispers of the old god graffitis this one is interesting because uh this one was like i'm surprised this was near the top of the list because this is kind of like a niche or one but i do understand that it was probably very it was, it was probably pretty popular so this was actually really cool from blizzard one of the things they decided to do was during the whispers of the old god expansion in real life they made like paintings across the city i think it's in california but like there is um this is a good example right they they did yog on the side of a building for like hype for the new old god expansion it was actually really cool there's a bunch of them i'm not sure if i can find all of them now but there was there's a ton of them that just had like a bunch of big art 
on side of buildings. Uh, but this was cool. A uh, little, little like uh, a better way of advertising your game to like the the normie who don't doesn't really know what Hearthstone is, and they clearly had the budget for this to do this across. Um, I think it's California. I want to say Los Angeles or somewhere around there, but definitely the California region because that's where Blizzard is located. Uh, okay, everyone, get in here. This is an absolute classic because if you don't know what this is, I'd be very surprised. Even if you barely heard of Hearthstone, the Grim Patron card is probably the most one of the most popular cards of all time. And if you've never heard this sound this is basically what it is hey everyone get in here pretty simple every single time a grim patron would summon a grim patron would say everyone get in here and this was also a very good deck in competitive hearthstone at the time so this was very much heard from a lot of different players around the world. This was a very, very popular voice line. All right, uh, Lich King voice lines. This is actually something I'm not 100% sure on, and this is at the top of the... I mean, so I guess what it is is that every single class, when you queue up against the Lich King and Frozen Throne, uh, they had he had his own specific voice line for that class, depending on what class you played, right? So for a Priest, he has one that basically tells him to shut up, which is hilarious. And it goes on from there. All right, the snake totem. Yeah, so uh, if you don't know, uh, Shaman has different totems that you can summon for when you hit the button. And nine years ago, all this time, I thought Stone Claw totem was a snake. <laughs> I guess this is from the uh, the actual old artwork, but it, it kind of looks like a snake because the Murloc ends up being like the head of the snake wrapped around the totem. But it's it's actually not the case. As soon as you look at the art, you notice that there's Murlocs. Then this is the totem on its own, uh, which is very funny. I guarantee some people probably still think it's like a totem wrapped around with a stake but yeah it's uh that's pretty that's pretty much what that is uh the fifth totem okay uh so a while ago back in the older days of hearthstone where before they updated it with the new totem they had something called the uh wrath of the air totem which was spell damage plus one the hearthstone developers felt like i, I want to say in 2021 i can't remember exactly what year 2020 2021 i think it was the forge of the barons year they thought that wrath of the air totem was kind of a bad way of doing rng because if you did end up getting it it would feel really good for you but bad for your opponent and i guess hearthstone felt like they didn't want that extra layer of rng to make your opponent tilted so they actually got rid of this you can no longer summon this totem from shaman and instead you summon the strength totem which is at the end of your turn give another friendly minion plus one attack it's not nearly as good as wrath of the air totem but it's not like the worst thing to summon i still think this is the worst one by far pre-nerf jaina oh my god i actually am quite familiar with pre-nerf jaina because when i make thumbnails i I still use pre nerf Jaina, not because of the boobs. Let's be real here. It's more because the it's the HD artwork. For some reason, they didn't make like a high definition version of it. Um, so this is what the new art looks like. Uh, as you can see that there is something covering up her boobs, um, which is, you know, we got to make we got to make sure Hearthstone's family friendly. We got to make sure it's Hearthstone family But this is what it used to look like. Uh, you could notice there is a lot of cleavage around Jaina. Uh, one of the most popular, <laughs> one of the most popular artworks of all time. Uh, and Blizzard decided to get rid of it. Can we just get an F? You know, that is what it is. Uh... I, I miss her. You know, everyone does. Worgen Greaser buffs. Okay, I hope this guy actually has... Nice. Okay, so if you don't know about Worgen Greaser... All right, if you don't know, uh, Worgen Greaser is a card that was released, I want to say, in Old God? Mean Streets of Gadgets and Sorry. So when this card was first released, it was added as a 4-mana 6-3. And as you probably know, the card was absolutely unplayable. Hearthstone, for some reason, during the, the patch notes of Voyage into the Sunken City decided to buff it from three mana to four or three health to four sorry and this card even though it was a wild only I, I it still didn't see any play no one wanted to play the worgen greaser it's absolutely hilarious with the addition of the caverns of time um expansion added to the twist format they decided to make it a six five which is absolutely hilarious uh now it's a actually a pretty good stat line which begs the question what is a vanilla stat line that would see play in hearthstone a four mana six five is actually pretty 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 good but it's still i don't think really sees play in wild whatsoever uh and basically the meme at this point is the hearthstone team will continuously buff it until <laughs> the card does see play and it's it's obviously being compared to the actual goat of hearthstone boulder fist ogre which only has seven health so at the rate that the worgen greaser is getting buffed year by year in the year 2022 
25, the Warger Greaser should be a four mana six, seven. And uh, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see if this actually ends up being the case. Silverback Patriarch Power Creep. Whenever a new three drop, this is Silverback Patriarch, if you don't know. This is uh, one of the OG cards in Hearthstone. This has been in the game since Classic. Every single time a new three drop is released, this is the card that people often compare it to. Uh, as a three mana one four taunt and a beast, it's just not very good. Even in Classic, this card didn't actually see a ton of play. But I'm pretty sure if I scroll down into the wiki, it has like a comparison, does it? It does not. Okay, I'll have to find some. Uh, just to show you some power creep, by the way, this is what it was back in 2020, or this was what it was back in 2014. They recently dropped a card in 2023 called Barrels of Monkeys, which is basically three silverback patriarchs for two mana. This card was basically power corrupt with, like, with the first expansion with um, Spider Tank. It's absolutely hilarious. So this is 2017 power creep on the card. Imagine what it is now. Okay, uh, WoW TCG. Wow, this is not the popular. All right, well, Hearth before Hearthstone was introduced to the world, there was basically a WoW TCG. I'll just show you an example of a card. Uh, this was actually designed, I believe Kibler helped design this, this card game. And a lot of the art that is used in Hearthstone from the early days was actually artwork from the WoW TCG. CG. It plays kind of differently with than what Hearthstone is. Hearthstone was a much more streamlined, better experience. And I don't think this game is really played anymore. I'm pretty sure after Hearthstone was released, this game kind of died. Knocks out. Oh my God. This is an absolute. This is this should have been at the top. If I'm going to be honest, this is this is it. When Nax Ramus was released, this 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 wonderful adventure called Curse of Nax Ramus. Uh, I believe this is a World of Warcraft meme first. The the real idea, the real meme from this entire adventure was that when Nax was released, everybody in Twitch chat was just writing Nax out Pog or Nax out, and it kept being a meme, especially because the way that they released the adventure was a week by week thing. So rather than only dropping an entire expansion, they would do it week by week, and you get a specific amount of card so every single week people would be like nax is out nax out poggers god it's just uh <laughs> Hearthstone dropped a, an expansion recently uh, at February 14, 2023 called Return to Nax Ramus, and the meme still lived on because people were like, Nax out. Uh, Rope Coach. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you guys don't know who uh, Life Coach is, Life Coach used to be a competitive player for Hearthstone. He was actually really good at the game. But one of the problems that Life Coach had, well, it's not really a problem. It's not like he was doing anything wrong. It's more like playing against him could be a little frustrating because he would use his entire turn and that's where he got the name rope coach so he's roping he's roping it's turn two it's turn two trump's like what the hell is he doing i can't believe this it's only turn two he's still roping by the way you can see the rope that just came out <laughs> uh and he's still roping he roped his whole turn to play a fiery war axe right it's not like he was doing anything wrong he just wanted to make sure he understood the game at the highest level possible and making sure he was making the best plays every chance he could but in this situation, it's absolutely hilarious because you can see how frustrated Trump is just from waiting for him to get roped on turn two. Ixar Q and A's. Okay. Ixar was, he was a developer of the game for a very long time. And Ixar, after Ben Lee left, basically Ixar became the pseudo game director of Hearthstone. And one of the things Ixar would do was like a daily Q and A of talking about like specific questions that people had. And he would try to answer them the best he could to give some more feedback and what they were planning to do, et cetera. He actually did this for a really long time. Uh, it was actually one of the really nice things that the development team has done. He didn't need to do this. There was no reason for him to do it, but you can see he, he did a lot of them. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, uh, fortunately for Ixar, he he did move to Riot Games, which was really cool. And he no longer is the game director uh, for Hearthstone. So at the moment, the last Q&A that we had was probably about a year ago. That's when he left and no developer has really taken up the Q&A thing, which I think is completely fine. As far as I'm concerned right now, too, I don't know if Hearthstone has a game director at this time. Good stats for the cost. This one, I'm just going to let it speak for itself. Uh, basically, to speak for itself, it's very simple. Um, this card was one of the OGs in classic Hearthstone. And uh, if you played this shit in Arena, for example, it would uh, it would be pretty annoying to deal with because a 6-7 for 6 mana was not a bad stat line. And the flavor text is literally me have good stats for the cost. Uh, since that day, uh, since that day, we, we barely got to meet Ogre. Uh, he has been an iconic meme in Hearthstone. Another tier S meme when it comes down to it. And he is still referred to till today, uh, as you saw with the, the War Greaser from earlier. Uh, larger and larger men. Oh, my God. All right. This one's pretty simple. I will pull up the YouTube video for this one because I don't think I need to be the one to say it. 
Jade Druid became a thing, which is basically Jades are every single time you summon a Jade, it gets plus one, plus one, the stats from the previous Jade up to a cap of 30. And as you could probably tell, that's not a very skill expressive deck. And it could be a little frustrating to play against it, depending on what kind of deck you were. And again, I'm just gonna let Day Nine speak for himself here. All of a sudden you're just left-handed and you just reach for elevator buttons with your right hand out of instinct and you're just missing and pressing it. And everyone is like, has he never been in an elevator? Does he not know? I hope that happens. I don't really want your life to end. No, I don't want you to die. That'd be, ooh, that'd be way too severe. But I hope that you struggle to eat cereal because you don't even have, you know what? Screw left-hand dominance. I hope you just run out of dominant hands. Whatever brain circuitry is in your non-dominant hand, I hope it clones to the other one. Eating cereals harder, you brush your teeth, you go into your nose sometimes, you have mini toothpaste, it burns. I hope that happens to you. So I'm not going to review some cards about your deck archetype. I don't need to. You're already like, well, this turn I'll summon a larger and larger man, which will allow me later on to summon an even larger man. Yeah, no, your decks aren't cool. They don't take finesse. Your brain is small and both your hands suck. <laughs> okay, so as you can tell, uh, that was he he was not a fan of the archetype. Uh, they actually reintroduced Jades kind of in the newest expansion of Hearthstone for Titans, but it's not as I want to say easy as it was with Jade Druid back in the day. Uh, Shiro. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Shiro is this one's probably pretty iconic for most people. If you've ever watched Brian Kibler before, Brian Kibler had a dog and his name was Shiro and Shiro was pretty iconic in the community. A lot of people knew who Shiro was. And obviously because Brian Kibler was a pretty, is, is still a pretty popular streamer at the time, uh, people loved him. And unfortunately Shiro has now passed away which is very unfortunate. It must've been really awful for Brian Kilber. So I'm very sorry for his loss. It's it's probably a really, it's, it was a really big deal for the whole community. I can't imagine for what it was for him, uh, but this is Shiro. Uh, Tapsin, who the, f what the, all right. I don't know what this is. So uh, we're going to watch this together. This is a very old clip though. This was, uh, what expansion was this? This looks like it was old gods. No, it's uh, mean streets, right? Okay, so what is this? Let's find out. All right, so we can, base, we can play safe. We're gonna do it next time. There's only three cards left in the delay stack, honestly, actually. Yeah. Okay, so it feels is this, like- Is this him tapping a full heart cards? And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Huh. And he, yeah. But, okay, so let's- <laughs> Oh, wow. What is wow. happening? <laughs> 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 I, I guess that's it. It's just a popular clip of force and rope or force and tapping and overdrawing a card. Forsen is actually still really popular on Twitch. He has his own community and he's kind of like one of the old gods of Twitch. He's actually insanely popular. All right, Ben Brode rap. Uh, if you guys don't know who Ben Brode is, I would be very surprised uh, because he was the first game director to uh, play Hearth or He was the first game director for Hearthstone. He, he is the reason why Hearthstone is here today. He did a really good job of designing the game. And for the Ungoro expansion, I'm not gonna watch the full thing here. He decided to do a rap or it's, this was probably a pretty iconic moment for a lot of people when it came to Hearthstone, but I'll play a little bit. Scared, my name is Ben Brode. I read a thread on Reddit and it said that I should sing an O. Okay, there you go. That's, uh, that's basically what it is. Blizzard Jail. Basically, if you don't know who the frick Disguised Toast is, he is, by the way, arguably the most popular streamer that has ever come out from Hearthstone. He used to basically find bugs in Hearthstone and some of the times he would like utilize it. And I remember one of the times he actually found a bug and blizzard like banned him because they they were like what the hell you can't show these bugs to your players yeah so he like by suspension from hearthstone right he he got suspended in hearthstone basically because he found a bunch of different bugs uh a car card back this is actually something i don't know oh this is interesting okay i didn't know this okay so if you don't know hakar a car is a card in Hearthstone, I believe based on something in World of Warcraft where you will like spread a disease. I, I don't know much about World of Warcraft nor, but based on the card, what the card does, which I will just pull it up just so we don't have any confusion here, unless it's just on this page, that'd be very nice. Oh, it is nice, okay. Uh, oh, nice ads, okay, perfect. Let me just zoom in here real fast then. I, I hate websites, dude. Uh, a car has the death rattle of shuffle a corrupted blood into each player's decks. This is what it does. Every single time you draw one, it would shuffle more into your deck. And basically it was a pandemic in Hearthstone. And I guess it was a pandemic in World of Warcraft. So basically they embodied the disease as a Hearthstone card. This is actually a really, really, really good card uh, in terms of design and flavor. I really liked it. It was one of the most fun things that we got to play with. Um, and Blizzard decided to make a card back for it. And the way that you got the card back for this is if you played against some somebody who had this card back and based on what this person said to me uh within hours almost every account 
had this card back, which was absolutely hilarious. So if you do not have this card back, that means you never contracted the, the Hakkar disease and uh, you are a pure Hearthstone player. Uh, Crip's button. Uh, if you didn't know, what Crip would do is he would open an absolute monstrous amount of packs every single time an expansion would drop. And I'm talking like, you may think like 100 packs is a lot. My man's opening like a thousand packs uh, for a Hearthstone expansion. This is on top of Arena and the packs he just naturally earned from the game. He opened a lot of packs and he kind of... He kind of had a lot of dust in his disenchant button. And I remember reading an interview for, I remember reading an interview about this, that if he did this earlier, he would have crashed the servers of Hearthstone because they were not prepared to do that. But luckily when he decided to press the button, it didn't actually cross the server, but I will show you what exactly happened. I'm not going to watch this whole video, but you know, let's just hit the button. Why not? And I try to milk a few followers out of the deal. So thank you for helping that. And now we're going to press the button. So yeah, anyways, he hits the button. <laughs> and for about, let's just say like a minute or so, it goes on and then his game crashes. Oh. He relaunches it. You can kind of see in the bottom here, even though YouTube's going to cut it off, he actually ended up getting all of the dust. Well, I guess it went through. There we go. And yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. 11 mana Malagos. You know what? I actually don't know what this one is either. But it's just, uh, it just feels like it's kind of delaying the inevitable. Can't do that. <laughs> uh, wishful thinking, now get down. Hey, we've all done it. Bef hey, hold your lulls in chat. <laughs> I know that you guys have tried that before. And it wasn't just with this. You tried to coin Mountain Giant. What must have happened is he must have had Malagos on board and then he swung into the Hunter's face. The Hunter must have Freezing Trap, so that's why it cost 11. And yeah, you can't go above 10 mana until uh, they decided to make this card, which was Wild Heart Guff. Set your maximum mana to 20. Where was I? Smirk Song. Yeah, I'm going to get DMC ad for this. I can't actually play this chat. Um, I I'm very sorry. I wish I could because it's actually iconic. I would highly recommend you go you go listen to this, but I will, I will just play in the background. Basically, what it was is the meme with Hunter was that it would always just go face also using the smork emote on Twitch, which is basically like an orc, I believe. Uh, and it, this song was basically the embodiment of what that actually meant to go face as a hunter. You never trade. You don't care about taunts or cheating. You just always go face. Yeah, see, you can tell that uh, this was a very old meme. April Fool's patch notes. This one's actually really cool. One of the more interesting things Hearthstone has done. I don't know if they did this for 2022, but they, they, this is one of the more recent things uh, that they, they did, which is basically a April Fool's patch notes. And as you could probably guess, every single time Hearthstone does a patch, they release patch notes to basically tell players what the updates are and what they're changing and the bug fixes and stuff. Uh, but this one was super meme. Uh, like uh, Nemzi is now the default Warlock hero. The March of the Lich King expansion has been updated to the April of the Lich King, right? That's absolutely hilarious. These ones are just funny. Like Nemzi is now the default Shaman hero. The cards themselves... Uh, <laughs> old battle cry give your silver hand recruits plus two plus two the voice line was two arms men new gives it plus three plus three the new voice line is three arms men i think that's hilarious they did a bunch of <laughs> send a beast to a farm upstate it was uh they added pineapple on the card back this was a really funny thing for the hearthstone team to do and i hope they continue doing it for every single year because it's absolutely hysterical Blizzard's favorite class. There's been a meme for a really long time that Blizzard's favorite class has been Druid because throughout Druid's history, Druid has been like the best class in the game for the most part. And they always get this most ridiculous stuff. Honestly, I would also maybe, you know, slide in Rogue a little bit there, but Druid has basically been the class though. It's always been good. Rogue has also been in the same situation, but basically both of those two skins seem to be like, those are Blizzard's favorite class. Uh, 11 plus four, this is, wow, this is a classic. Uh, first and foremost, Wreckful is no longer with us. Uh, he did pass away. Uh, very sad. I really I actually do miss him a lot. He was one of the streamers I watched a ton of. Very unfortunate. Uh, but he will live on forever because of this fantastic moment um, when one of the, I think one of the first tournaments Hearthstone ever had, which was basically back in the day, Power Blast used to cost eight. Now it costs 10. Frostbolt still costs two. And he has a Cobalt Geomancer on the board, which gives him his spells plus one damage, which means he does have lethal on board. Actually, to Pyroblast 10 plus one off the spell damage would be 15 total damage to my 14 health so that is a little bit of a missed lethal yeah so he he decided to he yeah yeah you know he just he does that and then he you know it's unironically uh 
he ends up losing the game because Crip out heals him. I believe I think he's going against Crip, right? It's Crip. Yeah. Crip out heals him and uh, Rekful ends up losing this match. And this was absolutely one of the most iconic moments in Hearthstone because this was so early on. And for so many people, it was obvious, but I will give Rekful some credit here. And this is something that a lot of people don't consider. And this is an excuse for this play, by the way. But when you're in the moment, it's a lot sometimes you just don't see stuff right and it's much easier from a spectator point of view to just see some stuff like but you know this one was tough there's also this uh and i have to show this oh okay i'm gonna show this uh just because i think this is also a really funny moment in terms of um <laughs> something he got on uh on his stream donations afterwards i'm not gonna play it because he's playing music but basically this was a <laughs> so if three ice cubes equal 12 and three fires plus ice cube equals 37 then what is the fire plus ice cube i'm gonna let you fit i'm gonna let you figure that out but i will i will show you i believe he slams his desk right like he re when he realizes it <laughs> uh malagos or malganis uh is a turtle this one's pretty simple so he says, I am Malganus, I am eternal. But it sounds like he is saying, I am eternal. Uh, yeah, that is basically, so uh, at any point above this red line, this is probably something you have heard of if you've played or you've interacted a little bit in Hearthstone, this is what it is. Now we're gonna get to the point where you probably don't know this as often. Um, Dr. Boom comments. These are actually really cool. Uh, actually, these are very, very underrated because they're actually, um... but if you didn't know, so for the Boomsday expansion, uh, they actually did like, digital comics for Dr. Boom. And I think there's like three different ones. It's actually really unique and I would highly recommend you go check it out. They all have their own individual story. I'm not going to go through them right now, but they're they're all fully drawn. There's a full story. It's really interesting. I, I don't really remember them like promoting it too much, but Dr. Boom was so iconic that when they ended up releasing the Boomsday project, they did that. So that was really, really cool. Uh, Golden Boots. If you played classic Hearthstone, you know what this is. Uh, basically on which one is this the pandara map i want to say pandaria map they had these uh in the bottom here you can like break the the beets or whatever plants that it happened to be and you can keep breaking them but sometimes you would get a golden one or you would get boots and i believe you could actually get the golden boots maybe that was the meme maybe you actually couldn't end up getting it you could only get the fruit you could only get triple boots but you couldn't get the golden one that's probably what it was world championship cards okay every single time someone won a world championship they would design a card for them basically the following year so the first one was fire bat he got fiery bat this was the very first time they did this in 2014 that's also the first time they had their world championship uh then uh Askaka got priest of the feast pavel got chittering tunneler which um the hint is in the minions flavor text ear to the ground and he carefully interpreted the chittering noises you want to cast the spell i want to cast the spell this one is uh, i guess fine but like i feel like they could have done a little bit of a better job for that one uh tom got this one the phantom militia hunter race got the ace hunter creed uh vk lion got the lion obviously imagine they didn't do a lion there it would have been hilarious glory got the glory chaser and uh possessy got possessifier bunny hopper won it last year so there should be a, a bunny card coming up for bunny hopper at some point 100,000 health for Lich King. Oh my God. Uh, I believe that this was a very specific tavern brawl for Hearthstone at BlizzCon. But yeah, when you load in, uh, the Lich King had too too much health. Let's play this. I don't know if he actually beat it in the end. He might have, to be honest. No, I guess he lost, right? Oh uh, yeah, he just kept on losing. I don't think you could actually beat the Lich King here. I think it was just like a big meme. And he had so much health, dude. Uh, day one Demon Hunter. All right, this one, this one I remember very well. Right, we'll have to talk about this. This is the first and only time I believe Hearthstone has done literally anything like this. Demon Hunter was released at such a ridiculous level that the team had to hotfix some of the cards because it was absolutely disgusting. So Skull of Gul'dan went from five to six, Anteon went from five to six, I-Beam went to zero to one, and Warblades went from three durability to two. They have never hotfixed a card ever again at this point in time. That was in 2020. We'll have to wait and see. When they released Death Knight, they they took the opposite approach. So they they underpowered the class so that they can bring it more in line with uh, updates. But this was an experience. If you were there, my God, it was absolutely crazy. Duskate 2022. I don't know what the 
fuck this is? Uh, Duskate, a new Blizzard communication blunder resulting in bans. A binder Hearthstone patch meant to refund players spiraled into the current Duskate due to technical errors. Furthermore, the lack of official efficient communication left a bunch of Hearthstone players confused about why they got dust in the first place and frustrated after it was taken away. And some of them were even supposedly banned. The Hearthstone team assures that no player suffers actually dust loss as a consequence of this. What actually happens and why the Hearthstone players are angry about this in this article. Wow, there we go. That's pretty much what that is. That's that's just Blizzard, right? A huge indie company. That's basically what it is. Annoyatron achievements. I'm just going to show people just in case they don't know. Overwatch. Oh my God, an anniversary. Holy poggers. That's so cool. Wow. All right. If you didn't. What the hell? Oh, yeah. They're changing the time roll. Uh, if you didn't know, in Hearthstone, there are a. Their achievements now, they're basically. They don't do anything. They're just for like clout, I guess, or just fake imaginary internet points. Um, and two of them are very annoying to get because they're based on Annoyatrons, which is the first one requires you to lose to an Annoyatron attack. The other requires you to finish the opponent of the game with an Annoyatron attack. Both of those are extremely difficult or can be extremely difficult. Also, one thing I don't like about achievements, and I'm just going to talk about it real fast, is that if you're going for an achievement and then your opponent concedes the game, you, you don't get the achievement, right? Which is it's it's just awful because sometimes you just can't do anything about it, right? Uh, Unicorn Priest. This is a banger, bro. This is a banger. So this was actually hilarious because it, it, it went on r slash out of the loop. Uh, and basically what it was is that priest, I forget what expansion it was. What what expansion was it, chat? Um, I want to say one night in Karazhan is where it was. Purify. So Blizzard released Purify in one night in Karazhan. And this card, this card still makes me laugh, but it did end up actually seeing play at some point, which is very funny to me as well. Uh, but during the time where people were like, wow, priest is so bad. It's the worst class of the game. Ben Bro, again, the game director at the time, uh, he said that people just haven't found the unicorn priest deck to actually just break the game wide open. And basically it never happened happened uh, as far as we're concerned how could it happen when they printed a card like this at the time and it became a beam uh glue bacon what the fuck is this a lot of these i don't even know glue bacon sub a common glitch where the menu text would glitch out and various menu items would be replaced with various nouns in glue in all caps oh okay so it's just a, this again another honestly the, the, the number one here should have been a small indie company blizzard that's what it looked like <laughs> So rather than showing the the actual name of the mode, which should be Battlegrounds, it kind of just broke it and it says glue bacon. You did it, Snow Flipper Penguin. You did it. OK, well, basically, Snow Flipper Penguin was like, <laughs> I mean, we already had Wisp in the game, so they decided to make a zero mana one one. And there was another zero mana one one, I believe, at the time. Uh, this one's a beast, but this card was absolutely useless for the most part. But when a card called Card called Mark of Yashiraj was basically a way for you to guarantee the buff on a beast and draw a card and when Trump did his like re-review series, um, he instantly granted the uh, Snow Flipper Penguin instead of being like a one star. He gave it a five stars and he basically said, Snow Flipper Penguin, you did it. Uh, purify controversy or purity controversy. What the hell is this? Oh, it's, it's just what the uh, the unicorn priest. Uh, Maestro refund controversy. Oh, baby. This one was spicy. This one was a real spicer. Um, OK, so this one is going to require some assets. One of the coolest cards Hearthstone has ever printed is this card right here, uh, which is a two minute three two for Rogue. You start the game as a different class until you play a Rogue card. This one was really cool because it was probably I wonder I want to say that one of them, if not the most unique thing they've ever done in the game. Like, I, I can't think of a card that's really done anything as unique as this card. It was really cool when they released it. But because of this card, um, there was a weird interaction with chat. What's the card called? This card was really good with Maestra because what would happen is uh, every time you drew a card, it would reduce the cost of this, but they changed it. So it says cost one less for each non rogue class card added to your hand, which means that you could no longer use the Maestra interaction to actually make this card playable or as playable. Uh, so when they decided to finally nerf Wild Paul Null to what it was, People thought that this card should also get a full refund because you crafted this card specifically because of this interaction. Um, she, however, didn't get a full refund. Players were angry and a massive online discussion inflamed. Half the player base was angry because it was a similar situation to the Leper Gnome nerf controversy. The other half was smug because Maestro Rogues were tier one for weeks due to this unintended interaction. They didn't give, basically, they didn't give dust. Classic Blizzard, am I right? Um, succubus. <laughs> All right, this one, this one is just like um, the Jaina one from before. So this is a card. If you played classic Hearthstone, you remember what this is. This is Succubus. Um, this was a card actually in the game. 
Blizzard uh, decided to remove this card from the game and instead they just added this card into the game, uh, which is Fellstalker, which if you if you're if you're for those of you who are paying attention, uh, it is absolutely just the exact same card. There is no fundamental difference between the two, except for this one has. Uh, yeah, uh, and this one uh, does. Uh, yeah, it, uh, and this one does not. Yeah, um, uh, boo, boo. Yeah, you horny bastards. I know. Uh, but yeah, I don't mind it. I'm sure other people do. It's a discussion for the uh, philosophers among us. Heal zoom. OK, cool. This one's really interesting. Basically, um, during the time of I want to I don't I think this 2018 was what this was Witchwood. A deck called Heal Zoo was introduced. It was because of this card right here. Happy Ghoul cost zero if your hero was healed this turn, which people didn't think that it was going to be that good because it's like, oh, it's basically just a zero mana three three. But in Warlock, because there's a way a lot of ways to damage you with cards like Flame Imp, you could go Flame Imp coin into Voodoo Doctor into double Happy Ghoul, and then you absolutely got rolled. Uh, Shutterwalk on release. Sure. Basically, what would happen is the old Shutterwalk didn't really have a cap on animations. So when you played the Shutterwalk combo, which if you know what the Shutterwalk combo is, it's absolutely ridiculous. It would go on for years. Like it, it felt like almost years. And you can see how he's kind of making fun of it because you know, six and a half hours later, he's still he's still waiting for the animations to be done. Uh, I believe like there was no cap on how much Shutterwalk would keep casting because you just basically casted a bunch of Shutterwalks in a row. And it was up to your opponent to either be like, I'm going to wait for this turn to be over or to strictly concede. But I believe at the time when you conceded, you still had to watch all of the animations so even conceding did not work uh naga giants and add this one's actually really funny one of the one of the more like uh <laughs> one of the more uh interesting ones on this list for sure so if you didn't know what this deck was it was called basically um i don't know if it was with hunter specifically but it was basically because of this card this card used to be a five mana card uh and it was a five mana five five your cost cost five but because your cards cost five sorry but because of the way this interacted with all of the giants which i will bring up and what this would do is your instead of costing 12 and then getting the reduction it would bring the giant to cost five and then the reduction would take place and that worked with every giant so that worked with clockwork it worked with arcane it worked with sea giants it worked with every single one at the time and wild as crazy as the game mode was was being absolutely dominated from this card this card fundamentally was just breaking the game because your opponent would play a shit ton of giants every single turn um this is this is why this this is more iconic than i'm leading on here uh so some guy made a reddit ad like he paid to have an ad on Reddit basically saying uh, he will keep posting this ad until the card gets nerfed. And he he did like a full list of what he did. And it was extremely funny. Uh, I, I guess because of the ad that he did, um, it ended up getting nerfed. Uh, I guess the Naga got nerfed because of him. So thank thankful to Jamie FTW for uh, putting his hard earned money on the line. So that card would end up being getting nerfed. Sacrificial pack on Jirax. Sure, this one's pretty simple. OK, so in classic, this is what this card read. It said destroy a demon, restore five health to your hero. In the older days with Jaraxxus, what you were able to do is if your opponent became Jaraxxus, you were actually able to sack pack them and they would lose the game. And this was actually used in um, some tournaments, I believe. And it was just a fun little thing to know because it actually ended up mattering. When Demon Hunter came out, thanks a lot, Demon Hunter, they decided to change the card to this, which is destroy a friendly demon, restore five health to your hero. Listen, I don't know why they did this. I think that was a really stupid idea. But on top of that, Warlock was one of the best counters for Demon Hunter at the time because you just play this card and you get life back and you deal with their tempo for zero meta. So they decided to change it. I still think it was a horrible change. Uh, Jaraxxus is no longer the same thing anymore. It's no longer a demon. It makes you just become a hero like any of the other uh, hero cards in the game. So even if Sacrificial Pack was reverted, uh, you can no longer sack pack Lord Jaraxxus based on this. Diamond card refund controversy. This one's going to be a little bit of a doozy for you. Uh, OK, so uh, Hearthstone recently has decided to release diamond cards. So I'm just going to bring this to a different image so we can kind of see what this looks like. This is what it looks like. They're kind of like animated. It, they're like the the tier above golden in my in my personal opinion i do like golden a little bit more but this is what the card looks like this card ended up being nerfed 
because it was a very powerful effect. Drekthar was a really, really good card. Uh, this card, uh, obviously it was 3000 gold or 25 euros just to buy the diamond version of this card. So when it ended up getting nerfed, people were like, wait, do we not get a refund on this? Because we bought the card for that reason, because it was going to be playable. And spoiler alert, when the card was nerfed, it no longer saw any play. Like it, it was dead, right? So um, yeah, minus 25 is a really good example of this. It ended up being that I believe Blizzard automatically gave 3000 gold to the players who bought this i think people had to like make a little bit of a ruckus so blizzard would actually give it nas dormo turn skip i am gonna shout myself out here for a quick second by the way in case you're curious chat i did a whole video on this but if you're someone who's been here for a while some of you actually have may not seen this video and uh it makes me kind of sad because it's my most popular video or how one card broke a card game. Uh, basically the, the, it's a really good video. I would highly recommend it. It's one of my, uh, it's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. Basically the way that it worked was that Nos Dormo would change it. So you only have 15 seconds on your turn, but Hearthstone beforehand did not register that animations would also take up time of your turn. So players could use Nos Dormo to completely skip your turn because of animations. Denathrius murders. Really? Okay. When Blizzard did the expansion murder, at Castle Nathria. They basically did like a little bit of a storyline of who killed Sire Denathrius was basically the storyline. Uh, and the entire expansion was, and the, sorry, the mini set for this expansion was supposed to be who actually killed it. They had like a Sherlock Holmes as a Murloc basically. Um, but that's basically what it was. Uh, I don't remember who actually ended up killing Sire Denathrius. Did they ever say he didn't die in the first place so nobody killed him? Is that what happened? I don't remember what it was, but that's basically what it is. Hecklebot voice lines. This one's pretty simple to talk about. So this is, uh, this is Hecklebot. Hecklebot is really unique because it has the most voice lines or most play sounds, I should say, of any single card in the game. I'm not sure if this is still the case in 2023, but at the time, this card had so like you can just face me, you adult amateur, right? That's uh, oh. face me, you egomaniacal elec, right? See, face me, you ridiculous rust bucket. So he had, he had a bunch of them. He also had a bunch of like attack sounds. Pretty cool idea. They didn't really do anything like this before, but that's what the Hagglebot is. Unreleased tribes. Um, if you type all, you have Nightmare Amalgam. This is like the first real Amalgam card that was kind of used. Uh, it's a three mana, three, four, but it has the tribe type all, which is really cool. But if you if you type like Beast, for example, um, this card will show up. Let me let me just find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Where is it? Uh, this card will show up, right? Uh, because it's an all type, right? But some of the but that's actually a tribe in Hearthstone. Uh, if you type like Orc, right? Orc and Hearthstone, uh, the amalgams actually show up, even though Orc isn't actually technically a legit tribe in Hearthstone. It also works with Elf, right? There's a ton of them. Nazoth reveal. Nazoth's design wasn't actually first in World of Warcraft, but his first official appearance was this right here. It was uh, for Whispers of the Old God. This is what Nazoth looked like. They had to make him like an actual embodiment of what he was. And this is what he ended up looking like. That's what that is. I, I, I actually just learned that. So that's kind of cool. Mr. Bigglesworth. All right, I actually did just did a short on this. Uh, this is Mr. Bigglesworth, who is actually not a real card in Hearthstone, but it's Kel'Thuzad's cat. I'm just going to leave this open. Basically, if you go into Curse of Naxxramas and you play Animal Companion, rather than getting Huffer, Leoc, or Misha, uh, you actually get uh, this card instead for some reason. That's, that's pretty much what it is. It's kind of cool. You can actually kill him with it. You can interact with it and everything. It's, it's really interesting. Battle Pass first release controversy. Dude, I'm going to be honest. This one should have been near the top as well because this one was a really big moment for Hearthstone. Hearthstone decided to basically change how the gold system works, right? There's no longer quests that only give you gold. There's no longer the three wins for 10 gold like we mentioned before. They have a battle pass system, basically. And the way that you get gold now is by getting experience. You can get experience by completing quests or just by playing the game, etc. And before they released this battle pass, they told us that this system was going to be a much better system than the previous Hearthstone one. It was going to give players a ton more gold. It was basically promised to save Hearthstone is what I'm going to describe. This is the same year that Dima Hunter was released. There was more cards to collect. They were also going to start doing mini sets. So there was more stuff to collect. This was basically like this is going to help players who only play free to play to make sure that they don't get reduced gold and they, they have to pay more money, etc. When they actually released the battle pass, 
it was the it was worse than the old system so take that in a system that was released in 2014 was worse or was better than the system they released in 2020 just for the record now that being said it was still it, they still have the battle pass the, they still have the battle pass system in place currently because the system is much better but when they released it it was it was worse and blizzard did not say anything by the way if people didn't stand up against blizzard they probably would have just kept it as it was so shout out to people who stood up zeddy is probably the most iconic person that stood up first against blizzard um one of the reasons why he got kind of a huge boost in popularity was because of that um and after a little bit they did end up fixing it but during that time it was actually really bad people were not playing hearthstone this was just before they were about to release their new expansion madness at the dark moon fair um doing a different iteration of the old god cards and imagine people being upset before you're about to drop another yog again people didn't care because the battle pass system sucks uh signature card flood i actually did a whole video on this as well uh when blizzard released march of the lich king is when they dropped the death knight class they also released a brand new type of card which is called signatures and these cards you can't actually craft you have to get pretty lucky it's like the same rarity as getting a golden legendaries and this was the first this one right here was the first real iteration of what the signature card cards looked like uh very muted very black and not really in the hearthstone theme the card borders weren't great i was i was not a huge fan of it i actually made a whole video talking about how i i, I think that they were just kind of a mistake uh this is like a different example of like what they could have done instead but this is what they looked like for the first iteration of uh signature cards now thankfully the community stood up enough to basically be like this is not what we want and they started to make signature cards that looked like this which looks so much better in comparison like look at this look at that garbage look at that beautifulness right it looks so much better a song of fiery war axe and icebreaker i'm gonna assume this is like a game of throne reference so i think oh yeah so i will just mention like for the signature cards i believe when like the the expansion first came out you were so much more likely to get them because the packs were bugged so people were opening these like very rare cards uh very often oh this is from vicious syndicate i actually don't know what this is a song of fiery war axe and icebreaker i'm assuming this is a game of thrones related thing if you want to relate it uh we'll, we'll read a little bit of it just to get some context here because i'm actually not sure what this is admit your defeat thrall there is no way you could win this game Garrosh and Thrall were sitting across the table from each other, playing Harston on their laptops. It was the first day of the Witchwood expansion, and the orcs were situated in one of the secret gaming rooms at Blizzard's HQ. Thrall was staring closely at his screen, mulling over his next play. Okay, how about this? Thrall finally made his move, placing Murmuring Elemental on the board, followed by Shutterwalk. From both computers, the loud cries of the, the new legendary minion emanated. My jaw! Okay, yeah, anyways, that's, that's what it's going to be. So yeah, kind of like um, a little fantic storyline, probably related to Game of Thrones. Cabal Lackey isn't a bird. I never thought it was a bird, but I guess some people did. Is this what? Uh, well, uh, I just realized Cabal Lackey isn't a skeleton bird. Uh, this is what the card looks like. And this is the close in image of it. <laughs> the drawing, it's the drawing for me, man. That's that's absolutely hysterical. All right, Thermoplug Refund. Okay, so this is a uh, mecha mechagineer. That's how you say it. I always get this card wrong. I'm just gonna call it Thermoplug. Um, basically, what this card does is a nine mana nine seven. Whenever an enemy minion dies, you summon a Lepernome. Uh, Lepernome is a one mana two one. But during I can't remember what expansion it was, they decided to nerf Lepernome from a one mana two one to a one mana one one. Uh, this is because Lepernome was basically the go to one drop for basically any aggro deck, and because a two attack minion trades up, they wanted to make sure that this wasn't just the go to aggro one drop ever. Um, always right for whatever deck you're playing uh, but because this card summons a leper gnome people felt like this card should also grant a full dust refund because people who craft this card wanted to play with the good leper gnomes because this card actually and unironically this card's bad but it actually gets worse if the leper gnomes you summon are one attack than two and i believe that they didn't actually give a refund for this um which is absolutely hysterical second dinner i mean i'm not, I'm not gonna really go into too much into this this is pretty much this is a this is an easy one if you have played marvel snap and you know what it is it's pretty simple this is marvel snap wow marvel snap bat chest you know marvel snap's cool the person who made marvel snap the game director for the game is ben Brode. Uh, so because uh, Ben Brown made Marvel Snap, people were introduced to this new game. Marvel Snap's a pretty good game. If you haven't played it, Ben Brown is still currently working on the game. This is like his his love child after Hearthstone. There you go.
That's that's what that is, I assume. Spark bot recolor. Uh, basically what it was is I believe when they did the spark bots, all of the spark bots had like the same color or something, or they were they, it was something about like they weren't matching like the color of the keyword. The colors didn't make logical sense. The colors didn't make sense like Divine Shield was in yellow. I don't think that one's that interesting. I, I I don't know if we really need to talk about that. Uh, it is what it is. Craftsmanship. I actually don't know what the hell this is. Oh, so I think what happened was, if I remember correctly, is right, let me get the. So I believe what happened was they showed this card first, right? Uh, which is it's a location, which is a new Hearthstone card. And this card literally said the next relic you play this turn cast twice. Um, but we didn't know what a relic was at the time. Like they, they, we know what it is now because they showed it after. But when they released this card, it took like a week for them to show what actually relics are. So people were theorizing what relics were. And I believe there was a meme on Reddit. People were just memeing on what they could actually be or something. And they, they're just starting off doing random shit. There, there was like a week where this was happening. Uh, ch uh try class color flood. I so it means use of gadgets in uh, this was the first time they decided to do like tribes in Hearthstone, uh, which basically means they made cards specifically for specific classes. So there they are the grimy goons, the Jade Lotus and the Cabal, right? They're all only for three classes, but the initial launch saw an intentionally high rate of tri-class cards found in card packs being opened. And this was before they added recently in the year 2020, they added duplicate protection. So if you, if you didn't have a specific common and you opened a common card from a pack, it would give you a common that you didn't own. Uh, but because that wasn't there when the expansion was released, people were getting a lot of the tri, uh, tri class cards, pretty much. That's what it was. The flood Violet Worm is an MTG card. I actually know what this is. Here's Violet Worm. It's uh, eight mana seven seven released in Cobalt and Catacombs. Death Rattle summon seven one one grubs. It's a beast. But in Magic, for eight mana, five neutral, and three green mana, when when this card is put into the graveyard, put seven one one green insect creatures tokens onto the battlefield, which is basically the same thing. It has the same stat lines. It's almost like Blizzard looked at this card and said, hey, we can put that into Hearthstone. Hearthstone art books. There are currently five official art books focusing, focusing on different years to each. You might have actually seen these in real life, but Hearthstone actually released uh, art books for the years of Hearthstone. Uh, yeah, they, they did art books. I, I, I've seen them in like unironically in dollar stores. I don't know if people have actually ever looked at it, but yeah, they are they are in dollar stores. Uh, competitive YouTube deal. All right, this one kind of sucks ass, if I'm going to be honest. So we'll, we'll talk about it real fast, but this one makes this one actually kind of breaks my heart. Blizzard basically signed a deal with YouTube to not stream anywhere else but YouTube. And it's funny that I'm saying this while YouTube streaming, but this was basically the death of esports for Hearthstone and every other Blizzard game because people did not want to watch esports on YouTube. Uh, this was the beginning of the end for Hearthstone, especially at least for esports, because esports is basically non-existent in the Hearthstone world anymore. That being said, they must have got a pretty freaking fat deal from YouTube to do that because they did it for like three years, four, three or four years. It was a, it was a pretty long period of time. Uh, I'm hoping that Bobby got a nice yacht from it because it really was unfortunate. Patches original summoning quotes. All right, this one's pretty simple. So he used to say, I'm in charge now because he had charge, <laughs> um, you know, and then they he, patches was a very, very good card. So they decided to nerf it. And basically what they did was they just took the charge out. So it just says after you play a pirate, some of this minion from your deck. Um, and I believe they actually changed it. Yeah. So he says, Yahar. Yeah, they kind of make. Yeah, it's kind of sad if I'm going to be honest. Uh, not great. Uh, that's not the correct race. What the hell is this one? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Hungry Crab is a card that says destroy a Murloc, gain plus two, plus two. Uh, we're going against Giant Fin, which you know I, I'm not gonna tell, I'm not gonna assume anything here, but I believe that is a Murloc. So the idea is is that Hungry Crab should eat the Giant Fin, and then therefore you just win the game, kind of like what Sacrificial Pact was before. But it says that's not the correct race, and for some reason Thrall also says that's not a valid target. Gadgets in Pull. This one was actually really cool. This is something that I wish they would do more often. But when when they did the the mean streets of gadgets and expansion with the different tribes, right? They would do a they did like a little bit of like a challenge kind of almost, which was you you got to vote and you got to pick a tribe that you wanted to fight for. I believe that's what it was, right? I could be wrong. Uh, and you basically got to vote for like the the tribe that you wanted to win. It was a uh, it was it was basically the popularity of the three factions. 
based on the number of matches played by the classes affiliated with each crime family. Purple for Cabal, orange for Grimy Goons, green for Jade Lotus. So in this way, players were invited to fight for their chosen faction and sway the balance of power in the city. Kind of a cool way to get players more invested into what was happening. Reno Jackson is a dragon. Okay, this one, again, I'm going to shout out a video that I did. Um, one of the best videos on my channel. Your boy here, by the way, made a video called How Reno Jackson Became a Dragon. Basically, the story is... In the year of the dragon, there was an overarching story between the three expansions, and it ended up being that Reno became a dragon. But also, it was a really cool like Easter egg thing that they did because during one night in Karazhan is the first time that we actually got like a little bit of a theory that Reno Jackson was a dragon, and it took them what four two years, almost two two years after. To really kind of confirm it uh, if you're more interested in this i would highly recommend you just go watch the video because I, I think i did a pretty good job explaining of how it ended up happening and where it came from it's actually really cool uh duels on release so there's a game mode called duels which when it first came out it was very bad basically in duels the way it works is that you pick a hero so i'll just pick brand actually i'll pick the an easier one i'll pick fireheart right and when it came down to choosing like a hero, I don't know if it was just, the, was it just the hero powers? It might've been the, the only the, the treasures, which I'll show in a quick second. But the way you unlock these is by owning cards for the actual expansion. So it didn't matter that you didn't actually need to use those cards in duels. The way that you unlock them is by owning the cards from the expansion that it was released, which was really unfortunate because it basically said this some of the some of the treasures were way better than others and therefore if you own the cards it was like a more pay to win experience um they they fixed it obviously because duels was dying and they wanted it to be a good game mode uh spoiler duels is still kind of dying but that's what basically what it was arena minion what the hell is this oh i remember this yeah okay so i'm just gonna let this speak for itself last night i had a dream harson introduced a new keyword green all i did was turn card our creed like a hue like a hui 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 it's a hue i know but i'm gonna call it hui like a hui shift i have no idea what purpose this would serve uh basically they just took regular cards and made them green and i believe for about a week people were memeing about this um green a minion if it's already green give it mega green battle cry for the rest of the game all characters are permanently green it's 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 the hearthstone subreddit is it's a it's an anomaly dude it's it's very interesting uh cthulhu maxima otk okay so we're gonna talk about mark here if you guys don't know who mark is mark does a bunch of combo decks here's the idea uh this was actually a bug um wait how was this a bug though i gotta make sure i understand how this works well, I guess he's gonna Intro time. And this time, we're using clever game mechanics. So for this combo, we're first going to start by playing Beckoner of Evil to buff our Cthune. And then we're going to use Maxima to pull the Cthune from our deck. But for whatever reason, that Cthune continues to buff. 60 times over. Oh. Okay. So that's basically what it is. We're gonna watch the combo in action just because we have to see it. His opponent passes. Let's just watch this. I, I don't remember this. Well played. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Dude, I'm just... Imagine being this dude. Imagine being Jim here in this case. And you're sitting there like, oh, there's no way I lose this game. And then that just happens. Holy moly. Uh, this was hot fixed uh, very quickly. Because obviously that's hella stupid. But it was the first time that Cthune saw play in a very long time. Uh, shout out to Mark. He does a bunch of combos if you want to see it. Future expansions teaser. This card came out of United Stormwind. And he says, wow, there's a whole sunken city down here. That's it doesn't seem like it's anything because realistically, flavor text and Hearthstone are absolutely just ambiguous and they usually just meme around with it. But it did turn out that there was an expansion called Voyage into this Voyage to the Sunken City. Uh, this one says they're dancing to one of Rin's demonic symphonies. Her music might be famous now. Sorry, her music might not be famous now, but just you wait. Uh, again, another one that's like, whatever. It is what it is. But then Hearthstone released Festival of Legends, where Rin actually was an orchestrator. And it's kind of cool that they like wink at the player with some of these flavor texts. I'm sure there's more. I, I, I'm i not going to go through all of them, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. Or alpha version Warsong Commander. Oh my God, I remember this. Uh, the alpha version of this was absolutely fucked but it said whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack give it charge okay but in alpha the card read let me find it uh the card read um your other minions have charge 
So what you used to be able to do, because Warsaw Commander like never lives for another turn, right? It's one of those cards that's like, you literally have to kill or the game is probably just gonna be over. What you used to be able to do is reduce your life total enough so you could play it with Molten Giants and then the game was just over. Um, and then obviously they realized that that was kind of fucked up. So then they they said, whatever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge because you know, that's a much more safe balance. Uh, and then they decided to nerf into the Grand Tournament to your charge minions have plus one attack. So really Blizzard has no idea what the hell they're doing. Boogie Monster Card Flood. I don't know what this is and I'm excited to learn what this is. Wasn't there a huge thing during Whisperers where really early on launch people were opening packs and guaranteed getting the same duplicates over and over again? I remember the forums and sub being lit up hell up with people getting boogie monster and repeat i was one of those people all right i have a better example than this before uh they added duplicate protection like i mentioned before so now if you open a legendary you can't open that legendary again until you open every other legendary in the set uh this was beforehand uh this person was opening for, this person was uh opening for the tgt expansion which you guys probably know what that is if you played back in the day and there was a call called there's a card called both Ram Shield, which is still basically a meme, but it's not as much of a meme anymore because of other cards that have been released recently. But during the time, the card was awful. And this guy ended up opening like five. That's one. He opens another one. Imagine these are the legendaries you're getting. He opens a third one, opens a fourth one, opens a fifth one. Does he open a sixth one? Wait, is he get a golden one? He got a golden one. He opens a sixth one. Yeah, so uh, basically, this is what this is probably referring to. It's just very funny. You can't do this anymore, but God, imagine opening six of these. Okay, now we're moving on to like probably the much more niche stuff that people probably haven't heard before. Some of these are going to be like very, very, very specific. Avatar of the coin. I actually know what this is because your boy did a video on this. So if you didn't know, uh, the person going first naturally gets an advantage over the person going second. So they were trying to figure out how to actually balance the person going second. And they ended up making something called the Avatar of the Coin, which I believe was like a zero mana one one that you could just play or it was summoned on your board. And that was what the coin used to be. But then they realized that like that's kind of hard to balance, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, that's what the video is. Uh, if you're curious, go watch one of these two videos. It'll kind of explain what the Hearthstone coin used to be. Um, and obviously it's really tough to balance. I think nowadays the person going second still has a slight disadvantage, but the coin was a good way of balancing it. It's tough though. It is absolutely tough. Original shade of Naxxramas flavor text. I don't know what this is, and I am excited to figure out what this is. What? Is this real? Okay, so the flavor text currently of this card says, I would have thought the giant floating necro that is Nax Ramus would cast a bigger shadow. I guess because he's the shade. That's 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 pretty funny. Um, but beforehand, the flavor text was the shade of Nax Ramus hate the living. They even have a slur they use to refer them livers. What the fuck? Jeeve curve. All right, this one's a little bit. Um, I mean, this one. If you know battlegrounds at a high level, you probably know what that is. But basically, the way that you normally play battlegrounds is you would buy a minion on turn one, and then on turn two you level, and then you go from there. The Jeeve curve was a very specific way of how to play battlegrounds, where you don't level very early on, and you get a bunch of one drops to get some triples, and that's basically what it is. Um, there's a whole guide for it, why it was good. Which heroes play the Jeeve curve? It is what it is. Chinese arena draft. This one is, I don't know if we can really like show it. Currently in heart. Okay, I, th this needs some backstory here. I'm not sure if he's gonna really say it. Uh, if you guys didn't know, the Chinese server for Blizzard has been shut down. They couldn't reach an agreement with China or the company in China that lets Hearthstone be ran. So Hearthstone and Blizzard games are no longer in China. But because people in China really like Hearthstone, um, there's been a huge botting problem in Hearthstone currently that actually kind of ruined Arena. I, I'm not gonna read the whole article, but basically how it works as far as I'm concerned, uh, some, of the, some of the things you can do now in Arena is that people will like literally try to find the best Arena draft and then they'll sell it to people who wanna make like content on it. So that you have a sick Arena draft that absolutely demolishes uh, all the way up to 12 wins. I guess the other part is like people are just botting and it, it kind of ruins the experience. I don't know if Blizzard has really done anything uh, at the moment. I think they're trying to fix it, but I couldn't imagine how they're going to fix it because they could just keep making new accounts. <coughs> uh, worthless imp. Basically, there's a card called Sense Demons. If you play Sense Demons when there's absolutely no demons in your deck, you end up getting two of these in your hand which, you know, you're out of demons. At least there's always imps. I'm sure if you look hard enough, these imps have won a game in some fun combo. Also, I want to make this very clear. These imps are massive. 
I don't know why the hell they're calling them worthless. My dude, if I fought this thing in real life, I am dead. Look at this freaking arm here. Oh my God. Deathwing is Azumat. Another Spicer, shall we? All right. According to Azumat's WoW wiki page, there's an alpha version of Azumat, but the page it links doesn't exist. And I just want to know what this is like. In 2013, Ozumat was cited by Ben Brode as an example of a card which was designed specifically in order to use the awesome associate art, the TCG art. However, ultimately, the developers just couldn't fit him into the game. Eventually, it was removed from the game shortly before the beginning of beta, which its design became Deathwing. Uh, so this is what the art looks like for Ozumat. Actually pretty banging, if I'm going to be honest. Actually sick as fuck. Uh, really, really cool design art here. It's very like metal is how I'm going to describe it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they actually did add Ozumat to the game. This is what he looks like now. He became a colossal. But I think the art is not the same at all. The art it looks like more like this. Amidus is a male. What are how some of these? What the? OK, I, I this one's so niche. What the hell? This one might be nitpicky, but I am I the only one annoyed by the fact that Amidus should be called I don't even know how to pronounce this. Amitasas is a masculine suffix, whereas dash A is a feminine suffix in Latin. Any Latin speakers in chat? I have no fucking idea. Shirt. All minions, flame wanker. So all minions and flame wanker. Basically, this is what this is. A lot of these are just from Reddit um, eight years ago. Hearthstone cards are as created by a neural network. If you don't know what a neural network is, it's basically how an AI learns. Um, and this person did it for MTG and this person decided to do it for Hearthstone. And I, I, I actually haven't seen any of these. Uh, as it turns out, the card pool is a bit too small. The way that works is the neural train is a set of plain text input data, the normal card text list. The output is actually remarkable, simple, based on the previous characters the network has encountered. It predicts what the next character should be. This way, it creates a list of entirely new cards, one character at a time, with no concept of what Hearthstone card even is. The fact that it works is really impressive. Okay, three minutes, six three battle card, deal three damage to hard enemy. <laughs> okay. Anyways, there's a bunch of these snake train all minions have mana crystal <laughs> at the end of your turn then deal two damage to it ah when one of your minions attack ram minion oh six mana six zero blood manus manos all minions and then this is the flame wanker one mana two two battle cry gain plus two plus four for each other random friendly minion in your hand demon yo that card's fucking broken by the way if i'm gonna be completely honest that's disgusting auto pecker four thousand i know what this actually is uh, this was a card that was actually in the alpha version of Hearthstone. They wanted to take a they wanted to use the ability of using a virtual space for a card game. And all it was was a one man is one man, a one one deal one damage to any player who mouses over this minion. I believe there was also another card that was like this minion gets plus one plus one for each game that you lost in a row or something. And they, they obviously realized that was absolutely ridiculous. But could you imagine if this card was in the game? It'd be so, it'd be so funny. Shadow Flame to Gul'dan. I'm not sure what this is. We're about to see. This one was posted eight years ago. Anyways, that's what that was. What the hell? Ghostly keyword. I'm trying to see if this is actually here. I believe this is just like Echo, isn't it? Well, really? Okay, so basically uh, there's the Echo keyword, right? Echo was like the the fundamental, not the fundamental. It was the expansion keyword for the Witchwood. Basically, that's what Echo was. And Echo was if you play this card, you can play another copy of it and until the end of the turn. Uh, but there's a little bit of history on it. Echo was inspired by Ghostly, an earlier mechanic experimented with during the development of the Witchwood when the expansion was called Murder on the Gilnean Express. That's kind of cool. Cards with Ghostly discarded themselves at the end of the player's turn. Cards that only had Ghostly as their text essentially required the player to play the card the turn it was drawn. Well, other cards added ghostly copies of themselves to the player's hand. Um, they ended up with Echo. Uh, I actually really like Echo. I think Echo's good. Question mark, question mark, question mark achievements. So we talked about achievements earlier. Uh, these ones are actually really cool. I've done a couple of these. Have you guys done these before? What do you what do you, what do you think, chat? Basically what these are, one of the developers, Celestialon, uh, who's actually been a part of Hearthstone for a very long time, uh, utilized the achievement system to get specific card backs that you have to do like a specific challenge for. The one for murder at Castle Nathia was really cool. It was like trying to find out the odd man out. I really liked it. But if you did those question mark, question mark achievements, you ended up getting a specific card back. And I'm not going to remember what it's called. If if you do the question mark achievements, you, you get a card back. This is one of the card backs. It actually looks pretty nice. Um, they're fun mini games. Honestly, all of them have been pretty good. I don't know if I've done all of them, but I really like the Castle and Athrion one. And if you want to do it, you can. You just have to build like a specific deck list and queue up, and it'll, it'll put you into it. I'm sure they still work in the game. 
They're, they were really fun though. Those are those are awesome. I hope I hope they do more. Okay, uh, where are we now? Okay, Shadow of Nothing. Uh, Shadow of Nothing, basically the same concept as the Sense Demons card. If you play mind games and your opponent has ha absolutely no minions in their deck, you will get this card instead. Mind games with your opponent had no minions. Adrenaline Rush. Oh God. Yeah, I remember this card. Uh, this card was uh, this card was made in Alpha Hearthstone for Rogue. As you can see for the time, it was a very good card. One mana to draw a card in Hearthstone back in the day was actually extremely good. And in Rogue, it was even better than obviously for combo, draw two cards instead. Also what I like, just pay attention to the, the, the way that the text is done on this card. It looks so strange because it's so small, but this card didn't make it into the game. Lich King versus Battle Pets. Battle Pets expansion around the GVG teaser season. The community mistook a lot of the image as teasers for a pirate versus ninja expansion. Since GVG was obviously not that, the community was expecting it to come later. There's also a custom expansion with that theme on YouTube. People thought this was going to be pirate versus ninjas. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, this is fucking man. This is old, old. Yeah, people were definitely like, I remember when people were trying to predict what the first expansion was. And obviously that was like the first expansion we got. And yeah, it ended up being nothing. Uh, apparently, though, Eric Dodds is jokingly referred to a potential of the Lich King versus Battle Pets expansion. <laughs> what the hell? There was another idea out there. Well, actually, it wasn't really an idea out there, but it was kind of wishing it would have been because it's one that I think would be super awesome is the idea that maybe we could do something like, you know, the Lich King versus Battle Pets. Of course, I've only put that up there to have a little fun with it. But on the other hand, as I've been looking at it and thinking about it, it's starting to grow on me, actually. It's pretty funny. And I guess this is like <laughs> it's, it's actually so stupid. Battle Pets actually basically Pokemon minigame in WoW. That's kind of cool. Monk class leaks. Data miners were, were able to find files that point to us getting a monk class somewhere in the future. Most notably in the file is a location that already stores data for the monk class, which is a correctly stored banner. I mean, okay, that's pretty much what it is. Nerubian Soldier. And this is another older card, right? Yeah. What the hell is this actually? All right, that's what that looks like. Um, this card may have been intended for use in a Tavern Brawl. It had other uses since the card ID does not necessarily imply anything related to the Tavern Brawls being identified as a regular Whispers of the Old God card. Therefore, it may have also been a scrap development card for Whispers of the Old Gods. Eight mana, seven, seven. Unplayable. Fate Splitter Hero cards. Fate Splitter gives you any copy of a card that kills it. Oh, would you look at that? So if your hero killed the card, you actually get the hero in your hand. Oh my God, yeah, and you can get the... <laughs> You can, <laughs> you can get the dart trap and he turned it to guff. Oh my God. That's actually crazy. <laughs> what the hell? That's so random. Thought seal alpha flavor text. Uh, it's flavor text right now is what did you get when you cat? What do you get when you cast thoughts still on an orc? Nothing. It's a torn joke, but it used to say that awkward moment when you steal his thoughts and realize he's thinking about you without pants on. Thank you, Blizzard. Thank you so much. This one's going to be so uh, I think it's Fula's. I want to say Fula's or Fula's. I'm not really sure which one it actually is. But if you don't know who this person is, or this, I don't want to I don't even know if it's a person. It might be like a company or something. Uh, if you don't know what this is, basically, this person did a bunch of really cool custom stuff for Hearthstone, uh, which is this. He has a, the full channel still up, and a lot of these are really unique. They're like his own animations and his own cards, and some of these are really good ideas. And it's funny because I believe we looked at this before, but he kind of predicted what uh, the Death Knight hero power was going to be before he even did it. Uh, yeah, he has a bunch of stuff, but for some reason, he kind of just stopped posting videos, and I don't think they he said anything or they said anything about why they stopped posting videos. And I think the problem that he had uh, they had was um, he got DMCA'd from, or maybe he ceased and desisted from Blizzard directly. So he's they stopped making content they they basically stopped making content for the game and it's unfortunate because their stuff was really cool and i guarantee if you go look now you'd still be like oh that's really interesting yeah, it, it died grimoire of service okay so this was a warlock card that was supposed to be released in rastakhan's rumble uh, but it was cut prior to the release due to being deemed too powerful when used in combination with void lord oh no um the card is a nine mana spell for warlock choose a friendly minion add a copy to your hand deck in battlefield uh this is the card that it was replaced with which obviously was just bad 
And yeah, like uh, you guys were saying, it was eventually actually made into a card. Yeah, uh, so this card was actually released in Descent of Dragons. It was released as a minion and it was neutral rather than the spell for Warlock. This card actually saw play, so it was good. I don't know why it was deemed too powerful. I guess they really thought that this would break the game. Uh, Diablo secret level. Oh my God. I made a video on this recently when they brought it back, when they, they did a Diablo like event. But basically what it was is in the Tavern Ball against Diablo, you could become the Cow King and that was really cool so you start off with this the dark wanderer and if you did a bunch of secret stuff you eventually became uh you can eventually become the cow king and the, the cow king's emotes were literally moo. just moo moo uh and then i when they brought it back um i tried to find the secret level again to try to become the cow king we know for a fact that they they took it out because i tried literally everything and there was no way to actually get to the cow king which is funny because in that video a developer came into the stream and told us that like there is no secret level but i didn't believe them because obviously it just to me it seems like a random person in chat and then the team messaged me on discord after to tell me that was actually a developer to tell you there is no secret level so but it's a fun video it's a fun ride ai lobotomy really hitting this on the nose are we basically uh the ai for solo adventures used to be a lot better and smarter on how they interacted with the board state and the player i don't know what happened but eventually blizzard did a patch and they suck ass now it's super easy to do a lot of the older ai battles and adventures because they don't really understand their mechanics anymore pirate versus ninja expansion which is basically the same thing as the um these, this one and the pirates versus Ninja expansion go together captain scale blade all right this is captain scale blade scale i don't know why i said that captain scale blade um this minion was originally planned to be in the grand tournament but was cut prior to release seven and a four six cost one less for each friendly pirate wait didn't they release this card yeah isn't that the same thing well they had this and they're like that guy looks stupid so now we're gonna make a uh, sky captain craig also, fun fact about this card, this is the only card in the game that has four or five R's for charge because it's a pirate. Kind of fun. They didn't they, they released a pirate with charge recently and they didn't do that. I don't know why. Tavish's Animal Companions. I can I can name this one without looking it up, but I just want the images. OK, so basically Tavish was a hero card that was released in Alterac Valley, but he was also a part of the whole story arc of 2021, I believe. And he has his own versions of his animal companions because he's not Rexar. He's a different character in the hunter class. So people thought that when he cast animal companion rather than summoning Huffer, Misha or Leok, he should have summoned a crab, thunder lizard or scorpion because they do the exact same thing. Uh, I believe at the current time, Blizzard didn't change it. I think it's still the same thing, but it makes sense, right? Because they would have to like code it specifically for when you become Beast Stalker Tavish. And I understand why they didn't want to do that, right? I get it. Uh, but his hero power is summon a random animal companion, I believe, right? So maybe I'm stupid. Maybe they should have done that, actually. Card opening time skip. When there's a new expansion released, if you pre-order the packs, you can't open the packs until the time the expansion is released. But I, I guess you could have actually like changed the time. So you trick the system that it actually was time to open your packs. So you can open your packs before the expansion was actually released. Least. I'm guessing you probably couldn't queue up for a game because it, the game was like, what the hell? These aren't live yet, but I'm guessing that's what it is. Okay, we're finally on the last section of this. Uh, Rafam died during Galakron's Awakening. In the expansion murder of Castle Nathia, Rafam returned to the Hearthstone with the card Imp King Rafam. In the card's flavor text, it says, not even death can stop Rafam from pursuing a life of crime. This, along with the voice lines talking about minions obeying him, implies that the hero ending of Galakron's Awakening story, where one of his minions, Carl, betrayed him and let Dalaran fall out of Rafam's control, and his whole operation soon began to fall apart, is the canon one, and that Rafam died and was sent to the Shadowlands. Oh my god. I, I guess that makes sense. That's that's a really deep cut. Uh, Hitler reference hero skin. I don't know what the fuck this is. Is this a Hitler reference? Sai gave up art for swordplay after a teacher described his paintings as bloody awful. Yo, uh, the digital art program called Painful Sai. I can see why someone would say it. That's like, I could, okay. I, 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 I can see why someone may think that's pretty funny, actually. Uh, fun fact about this skin, you can only get this skin for getting 12 wins in the Heroic Brawl Seum. Custom Hearthstone Scourge Ranger. Oh, oh, I, I, I know this one. Of course I know this one. This one's a D. Okay, so context here, chat. One of the new 
designers on the team. His name is Leo. He's a very awesome guy. But before he got hired, he did a hundred days of making custom. Right, maybe did it. Was it a full year or a hundred days? One of the two. He did a, a basically a thing on the r slash custom Hearthstone subreddit. He would post a different custom card every single day. And one of the cards that he made basically got added into the game known as Scourge Ranger. And this is the Scourge Ranger card. It's a three minute five four with reborn battle cry die and it's an undead. Um, I can't remember what the uh, original card was, but this card was added into the game after Leo was hired, which is funny because he made this card previously. Slush set. I know what this is. I actually did a full video on this again. If you're really curious, uh, but I'm sure the slush set is a, a set of cards that data miners find in the within the game files which were grouped as an unused set labeled slush. They were all created during the development of different sets. They were rejected designs were recycled into finalized cards. So basically the slush set is older versions of cards that didn't get to see, didn't get added into the game that they reiterated onto it. So for example, there's a card called uh, Garalon, eight mana tented hunter legendary. Whenever this minion kills another minion, it may attack again. And this is possibly the beta version of this card right here. That's basically what it is. Uh, Cooking Reno is Doug Doug. Any Doug Doug watchers in chat? Okay, so Doug Doug used to be uh, a part of the Hearthstone squad. He used to work for the esports section. He is now a very good big content creator. I watch him. He is fucking phenomenal. Highly recommend if you haven't gotten to see his content to go watch him. Doug Doug uh, looked like this. And then there is a skin called, I believe it's called Cooking Reno, right? It's called Cooking Reno. And you can, I mean, it's not like, uh, 100% accurate, but you can kind of see the resemblance. Doug Doug kind of looks like Reno slightly if he had a mustache and a goatee kind of thing, like the little like sort of soul patch there. Uh, I can definitely see it. Okay, Amaz allegations. Um, I don't want to go too much into this, but pretty much Amaz had some allegations uh, towards him of how he handled specific things. And Blizzard basically took him off this Battlegrounds event that he was making and he wasn't allowed. After that moment, he stopped playing it entirely. Or he stopped playing Hearthstone entirely. He does not play Hearthstone anymore. That was like the last time he played it. Again, if you want to see the full thing, it's on the um, it's on my YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole video. But that is the Hearthstone iceberg. I hope this was fun. Yeah, this was a weird moment. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it. You can, you can definitely Google search some things. Uh, if you feel like you mi I, we missed anything on the iceberg, shout out to the guy who made it first and foremost. I appreciate you going through this. Thank you for making it. Thanks for having this whole list for me. That's very nice. Um, I will link the, uh, the Reddit post in the description of this video. Uh, if you think we missed anything, let me know. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that stuff. That's basically it.